all of God's children said, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. And guess what? Even if I'm by myself, I choose to rejoice and be glad in it. I'm not by myself, Emma. I'm not by myself, Emma. Somebody else want to rejoice with me? Amen. Listen, I just want to reiterate a couple of the announcements that have grown forward. First and foremost, for all of our uh, family that have, have children that are going to be involved in Children's Church, remember, we need that registration form filled out when you pick them up on today. Every child needs to have a registration form. It's only one form per family, but we need those forms filled out so that we can be equipped to serve your children. Amen? Amen. Our Easter speeches for our young people, they are available. Right. You need to pick those up either today or a call to Sister, to Sister Kay Davis and let her know, make some arrangements. But um, on that Easter Sunday morning, we will have our Easter speeches. So we want our young people to be prepared to be successful. Amen? Amen. The High Point Daycare. I was told this on last week. The Hot Point Daycare, the daycare that will be housed here in Greater Ideal. The grand opening is Saturday, that is the 9th. So we, let's celebrate for that. Amen. <laughs> that is the central uh, grand opening, barring any setbacks. So we are thanking God for that Hot Point Daycare under the direction of Reverend Billy R. Williams. They will be in on that Saturday, it's next Saturday. And listen, y'all, we have to understand, I want this to become important to everyone, that we have attendance and participation in Sunday school. All right. That's at 9.30. Some of y'all majors did not know that. 9.30. We have Sunday school right here on Sunday mornings. Of course, you hear it worship service, but then on Tuesdays, we have Bible study. That is our Turn Up Tuesday Bible study. Listen, your pastor is real good. We start at 7 at the latest. 8, 10, 8, 15, you'll be out in the parking lot. Have I have a line family? Right. That right. So, so come and spend, spend an hour and some change with us on Tuesday so that we can grow together as believers. Amen? Y'all yeah. have a very special presentation. Remember this morning. We had a candidate for baptism. I'm so proud of this young lady. This certificate says this certifies that Rontania L. Robinson received Christian baptism on the third day of March in the year of our Lord 2024 at the Greater Ideal Missionary Baptist Church, located at 3610 Rodney Road, Dallas, Texas. And the scripture is by one spirit. Are we all baptized into one body? That's 1 Corinthians 12 and 13. Y'all, let's bless God. Stand on your feet. Come on, stand up, stand up.
Apparently, these people stand for the reading of the Word of God. If you ever wonder why we stand, we stand because we show respect. So if you can, please stand for the reading of the Word of God. And turn your Bible to Psalm 106. For his mercy 
endureth forever. Family, as we consider the text today, we, we have to understand that this particular song is one of the Hallel songs. Hallel, H-A-L-L-E-L. And Hallel simply means praise Yahweh. And these songs were sung by pilgrims as they made their way to Jerusalem for the various feast days in Israel. And these songs were used to prepare the hearts of the pilgrims for worship. And they, they served to remind the worshipers of the greatness and glory of God. That they served to remind us uh, that, that the worship that they were on their way to exalt a majestic and glorious God, and that he was worthy of all the praises they could offer him. And as we consider our lives today, church, we need to stop and take the time to count our blessings. Amen? Or we need to consider the God who gave us our blessings. Amen? And we need to assess the state of our worship of God as well. Family, I want us to look at this one verse today. And I want to share with you some truths in this verse that speak to us about having a spirit of thanksgiving and praise for the Lord our God. And if you would allow me just a few minutes to share my little speech, we're going to get out of here and hopefully y'all are going to get some chicken because that's what I'm going to get. Amen. First of all, first of all, first of all, we have to understand that there is a command for his praises. There's a command for his praises. When the Jews thought about praise, they, they thought about it in terms of the sacrifices at the tabernacle. Leviticus 7 gives the instructions for an offering known as the peace offering. And this was an offering given to thank the Lord because of his great blessings on his people. And it was an expression of faith love and thanksgiving. It, it, it offered the, the one giving the offering the opportunity to worship the Lord and to rejoice with the priests of God. It was a shared offering with a portion being burned on the altar and a portion being given to the priests. The, the peace offering was a free will offering and it was always given out of a heart of gratitude, thanksgiving and love for the Lord. However, family, we are no longer required to observe the Levitical offerings, but we still have an obligation to offer our praises to the Lord. Amen? And somebody asked me why. Uh, why? Because he is, and for who he is, and for all he has done for us. The writer of the Hebrews refers to the fruit of our lips. That's in Hebrews 13, 15. That entire verse says, By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. So, family, let's look at the first part of that scripture. It's a plain statement. It says, Praise ye the Lord. The word praise refers to a price or the value of something. We, we praise, we understand, and we worship according to the value of God to us. Right. Your praise says a lot about how much you value the Lord. Right. If you see him as valuable, valuable, you will find ways to render praises to his name. Right. We, we are commanded to praise him both now and and forever. And I hear you. You, you, you may have uh, produced some questions regarding this command. First of all, your first question might be, what motivates us to praise him? And in other words, what benefits do I get for following this command? Well, let me provide a few answers. First of all, praise diverts our focus from ourselves to God. In 2 Corinthians 1 and 3, Paul exclaimed, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort. Y'all, Paul went through a lot of difficulties. Y'all remember, don't you? And he was shipwrecked, he was stoned, and betrayed by his disciples. But he exploded with the praise in this. 
this passage because of his focus on God. And how many of you have ever tried that? And instead of focusing on your problem, you shifted your mindset and focused on your problem solver. Amen. And when trouble was all around you, you focused on that scripture. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly more than I can even ask or think. But also, but also, praise refreshes our spirits. It refreshes our spirits. David says, in his presence, there is fullness of joy. And have you ever been feeling low and, and, and down and out? I, I recommend that you try praising him. Listen, I'll, I'll give you a song that you can start to sing. You can say, Jesus, you're the center of my joy. All that's good and perfect comes from you. You're the heart of my contentment. Uh, hope for all I do. Jesus, you're the center of my joy. Check this out. When I've lost my direction, you're the compass for my way. Somebody ought to feel that. You're the fire and the light when nights are long and cold. In sadness, hey, you that shatters all my fears when I'm all alone. Your hand is there to hold to check this out, saints. Before you know it, uh, your praise uh, will give you a little pep in your step. You'll, you'll forget about the issues that you're going to because you took the energy of focusing on you and you're focused on him. The last of family. Praise opens doors for miracles to happen. Have I got a witness? Well, Y'all remember in Acts chapter 16, 25 through 26 when Paul and Silas were in prison, right? Because the scripture says about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was a, such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prisons were shaking. At once, all the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose. Y'all, they were singing and praising God. And then there was a powerful earthquake and they were all delivered. Check this out. Also, the jailer and his family came to Christ that night. Said some, something miraculous happens when the people of God praise him. Okay, Pastor, well, you told me what should motivate me, but let me ask, how should I praise the Lord? Well, I'm so glad you asked, and my answer is in your own way. Uh, but if you don't have a way, may I suggest these ways. We can praise him with shouting, yes, yeah. amen. Uh, that's right, open your mouth and tell God thank you. Listen, my mother told me the least you can do when somebody does something for you is tell them thank you. I mean, when you have somebody hold a door open for you, ladies, it is courteous to look somebody in the eye and tell them thank you. When somebody blesses you with a gift that they didn't have to give you, the courteous thing to do is to tell them thank you. But let me ask you, who woke you up this morning and started you on your way to protecting Yeah, we, 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 we just preached that man. 
Hallelujah. Scripture says, I will praise thee, O Lord, with my whole heart. Give him your best praise. But family, since I shared how you can praise him, I might as well share when do we praise him. We praise him from sunrise to sunset. From the rising of the sun until the setting of the same. Yeah. We praise him all the time. I will bless the Lord yeah. at all times and his praises shall come. Yeah. 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 Now while I'm at it, I might as well share where I do we praise him. Now, we can praise him in the midst of the congregation. In other words, we can praise him at church. Yeah. Uh, but then we, we should praise him before the world. Yes, give him praise at your job. Yeah. When you got that raise you wasn't expecting. Yeah. Uh, you can praise him at the grocery store, yeah. yeah. When it didn't cost as much as you thought it was going to cost. Yeah. Uh, you can praise him at the stoplight and just begin to think about how good has God has been to you. Praise him in front of the world. But, but then if you want to have a private praise party, you can praise him in private. Y'all, we, we ought to have some praise parties at our home sometimes. Have y'all ever been walking around your house and start thinking how good God has been to you? You start looking at all the stuff that he's blessed you with. You, you start thinking about how many doors he's opened for you. And you just have yourself a private praise party. We're commanded to praise him. The text then says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. I want to focus on that, oh, give. Worship and praise are personal gifts from the worshiper to the Lord. If you ever wondered what you can give to the Lord, give him your praises and give them to him all the time. Amen. I just shared there's a command for his praises, but secondly, secondly, we we have to know the condition for his praises. Why do we praise him? We are to praise the Lord because the text says the Lord is good. The word good means acceptable, pleasant, agreeable. We praise him because he is a good God. Yeah, his goodness, y'all. Yeah. It transcends time, places, people, and events. He is good. Yeah. He is good all the time. And all the time, he is good. Y'all, he's good in the light, and he's good in the dark. He is good. He's good on the mountain, and he's good Who are his, know that they have special reasons for praising. 
begin to bless his name. Y'all in closing. Yeah, I said closing because I'm just a doctor. I've shared the command for his praises. I secondly shared the conditions for his praises. Lastly, I want to highlight the continuation of his praises. The, 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 those of us who understand that we are under his grace will find that we have eternal reasons to praise him. He is to be praised here on earth. Yeah, we've already discussed that. We are commanded to praise him. He is to be praised for all he has done for us here. He's worthy of the praise. Listen, y'all, he chose us. Somebody should have got excited about that. Praise the Lord, saints. He called us. Praise the Lord, saints. He converted us. Praise the Lord, saints. He adopted us. Praise the Lord, saints. He placed our names in the Lamb's book of life. Praise the Lord, saints. He keeps us. Praise the Lord, saints. And he provides for us. Praise the Lord, saints. He keeps us in perfect peace. Praise the Lord, saints. When our mind shifts back and forth, he's right there. Praise the Lord, saints. He provides for us when doors were closed. Praise the Lord, saints. But check this out. He's coming back for us. Yeah. <laughs>
mercy endure not temporarily not sometimes but it endures forever every morning his mercies are new you have reasons to praise him and I encourage you in life tries to get you to focus on small giants. Know that you are the child of a bigger God. Praise the Lord. Say it's all over the building. We're giving God praise. And we're going to today. Listen, we are at our invitation, family. And the deal is you could be here. And you are ready to make a decision. What decisions can you make? Well, one, it could be that you are ready to accept the free gift of salvation. It could be that you're ready to take a step and join this great body of believers and become a member of Greater Ideal. Or it could be that you need someone to pray with them. These are the instructions. Listen. If you want to give your life to Christ or you want to join this body of believers, stand up right where you are. These men are not going to come get you, take you out, and deal with your pride. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Right, stand up. Come on now. Come on now. Come on. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. Amen. But if you desire prayer, have a seat right here. To my end, if you're right. And we're going to pray with and for you. And y'all, when anybody moves, y'all on this stuff, begin to bless God. Hallelujah. Thank you.
prayer. Waiting on this one brother who asked for prayer and to join the church. Amen. Yes. Oh, 
They're right there on the table. Oh, help me out, boy. They're right there. Okay, you got it. transition into our communion service, the Lord's Supper. Family, this is one of the two ordinances that Christ gave the church. One, to be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and two, to do this in remembrance of me. Jesus, who is the Christ. Before we partake in this unleavened bread and this drink, I, I, I have to issue a, a word of caution. We all, by definition, are not worthy to partake in this unleavened of this bread. However, because we serve a forgiving God, I ask that you take this time to examine yourself if there's anything where you're out of the will of God, I ask that you would pray. Ask for forgiveness so that you would be found worthy to partake in this Lord's Supper. But check this out. If you don't want to pray, I would suggest that you skip it this month. The reason why the Bible said that people have eaten and drank damnation upon themselves because they part unworthy. But no one can answer the question but you. So as I pray, you pray so that you may be found worthy to partake. Dear God, it's in the name of Jesus. Father, we come to you thanking you for your grace and your mercy. God, thank you for loving us so much that you gave your son Jesus to die on a rugged cross for, for me, for us. Father, as we partake in this Lord's Supper, let us remember and be thankful for the love you showed us. God, we're asking for forgiveness of sin so that we can be found worthy. Have your way now. In Jesus' name we pray and thanks be given. Amen.
This bread represents Jesus' body that was nailed to a cross that was tortured for you and I. Let us bow in. This drink represents the shed blood of Christ. The song says, what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Let us now drink. And all of God's children said, praise the Lord. Thank you. 
to do, God. We're going to thank you. And it's going to be well with our soul. This is a matchless, mighty name of Jesus. We do pray this prayer. And we give thanks. Amen. Amen. And amen. Listen, all over the building, just begin to bless God with the thought that he is in control of it all. Guys, as we get ready to go, I want to show something to you. Under the design of Sister Tracy, what's y'all's name? What's y'all's name? Tracy. Who? Treasure Tees. Treasure Tees, listen, I called up last week. I said, listen, I got a wild idea. I would like for you to design a t-shirt for our Bible study. Because I would like us to wear these t-shirts on Tuesday. T-shirt says, I tune up. Y'all check that out. I want us to support these on Tuesday. And the deal is you can get the shirts as well as the lettering in any color you choose. But I want us to wear these shirts. Of course, it has our church information on the back. So when people see it, say, what is that about? You say, I go to Bible study on Tuesday. A greater idea. Where are you going to church? And if they don't have a church home, then why not? Even if they don't have a church home, now we try to steal nobody. We don't know about that business. But anybody can come to Bible study. You know what I'm so this is our Bible study promotion. Get with Sister Tracy so that you can put your order in. I'm going to start wearing mine on Tuesday, y'all. I'm going to wear the shirt to the day. Amen. Amen. To the turn that ashy gray, y'all know it's black. <laughs> Especially if you don't know, I don't know how to me. I just throw everything in there. Amen. <laughs> but support, support, be a part of this so we can be, so when we leave and when we come in, people see us on one accord. Amen. Rocking our t shirts and jeans. Yeah, I want you to be comfortable in my house. I'm actually helping you with your outfit. You ain't got to worry about what you're going to wear on Tuesday. Just go in the tune up Tuesday Bible study t shirt. Amen. <laughs> Amen. We thank God for our newest member, Brother Pierce. Y'all, let's bless God one more time. Amen. There's nothing else. Let's all stand and sing our benediction song. Here we go. I need. Hey! 
able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the who press to his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty dominion and power both now and forevermore let us all say together 